I keep getting the same video on my for you page over and over and over again. And it's really stressing me out, but it's like, you found your soulmate. Don't let her leave. I'm just like, which one? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. All right. Welcome to Queer Talk, the number one podcast to connect you to all of your favorite queer creators in the space we share our stories on all things queer related. Uh, if you don't know who I am, I don't know why <laughs> you're here, but uh, my name's Brie Logan. Uh, Brie Logan on all platforms. And our guest today is one of my good friends. She's a TikToker. She is the owner of like four cute little kittens and a vet tech. Please welcome McKenna Temple. Hello. <laughs> so let's start by the fact that when we met on... Um, we met on TikTok, and you were trying to hang out with me. You were trying to, you were trying yeah, to, you know. I did. <laughs> you were trying to teach me how to skateboard. <laughs> oh, God, I forgot about that. I know. Because I made this video. So I made this video, and this is before I met any queer, like, any of the people that you've seen, like Elise, who does our podcast, shout out Elise, who does our editing, or Shay, or anyone that you guys have seen on this or seen in my videos. This is before any of us started hanging out. And so I started talking to her just like in on Snapchat and stuff like that. Cause she's in Cincinnati and she, I did some videos about skateboarding and I don't know how to skateboard. And she goes, I'll teach you how to skateboard. Come hang out with me. <laughs> uh, I was like, okay. I really forgot about that. <laughs> you want to elaborate on that? <laughs> Honestly, um, I just needed more queer friends. I get that. It wasn't as bad as the party we went to, I guess. Everyone thought I was flirting with them. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. I was a very flirty personality when I drink alcoholic beverages. You fucking Virgo. Virgo season's done, by the way, and Libra season's uh, in now, so. I know. But yeah, we went to a party, and this was when uh, we just started hanging out, and we just met you that day, I feel like. Yeah, that was and, our first time hanging out. Yeah. With everyone. And literally, I was like, Look to Shay, I was like, is McKenna flirting with me? And Shay's like, I think McKenna's flirting with me. And I was like, I don't know. I was like, I, th- I really think she's flirting with me because like, she's been flirty in the, in the TikTok DMs and, and then around Snapchat. And she goes, I don't know. And uh, we couldn't figure it out. All night, couldn't figure it out. I go home at like 2 a.m. And mm-hmm. since Shay and Elise live in Columbus, they stayed at McKenna's house. And come next morning, it was neither of us. It wasn't <laughs> Shay and it wasn't me. <laughs> it was Elise. <laughs> and we were just like, what the fuck? Like, what, were we making this shit up? I but, mean, I definitely flirted with you a little bit. You definitely flirted with me a little bit. Shut the fuck up. I didn't flirt with Shay. At least I don't think I did. I didn't think you did either. And I'm usually a pretty good gauge of that stuff. I'm not the person that's like, well, everyone's flirting with me. But I'm like, mm, I think she's flirting with me and I can't really tell, but I'm just going to kind of. Just gonna kind of set this one out. I was um, having fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought was so funny. Like it ended up being neither of us, but, but um, it worked out for the best. I I am literally I feel so good saying that I I have not done anything with anyone in our group, and I feel so good about that. I really do. I really want to keep that that streak that zero zero streak going. I'm we made out. We did make it. <laughs> <laughs> we did, but it wasn't. It wasn't like that, though. You know what I mean? Like it was. It was like drunken lesbian party. Oh my god! Every time we where have... I also kiss everyone else while we I was all... there. Whatever you think is gonna happen at a lesbian party happens. Yeah, there ends up being wrestling, platonic or not, um, kissing random people, spin the bottle, crying. In over, closets. In closets <laughs> about past exes. <laughs> and and crying about getting too high. Crying about getting too high. Crying about people that are me crying because I don't want to throw up. <laughs> <laughs> people running away and you can't find them. Oh my god, yep. It was, Our friend group, man. Oof, it's, it's some interesting it, characters. It, it really is. Also, if you guys haven't seen my kitty, I got my cat from McKenna. So if you guys have seen uh, my Instagram where I'm blowing up pictures of Frank, little Frankie, little baby Keeks, McKenna rescued five. Yeah. From it, but off the side of the road. Yeah. Tell me the story because uh, didn't your ex call you about them? We, mm, we never dated. I went on one date with this girl. So we went on the date. 
And then I did not connect with her at all. And hopefully she doesn't hear this. <laughs> That'd be awkward. <laughs> but she like texted me the next day and asked if I was home. And I was like, no, I'm at a bar right now. Why? And she goes, oh, I dropped something off at your front door. And I was like, what the hell did you do? And it was like a whole thing of sunflowers, a cactus, a playing cards. And it said, um, look for the queen of hearts. And when the queen of hearts it said sushi date, I'm like, oh God, what did I do? And that so sounds I just, awesome though, but. I know, but if I liked her. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> this poor girl. What date was that? The first date, second date? First. Oh, wow. That's, yeah, that's laying on pretty thick for a first date. I know. Date. That's it's a great, out. that's a great, like, um, fourth or fifth date. I agree. Or like you're a month or two in or like three months in. That was a lot for the first date. Yeah, it definitely freaks me out. She's a good end. date planner, though. I'll give her that. 10 out of 10 wedding planner. Uh, 10, out of, <laughs> 10 out of 10 first date, first date, first wedding planner. True. But then she um, knew that I was going to be a vet tech. So all of a sudden, like a month later, I had gotten this call at 4 a.m. from her just like, frantically crying saying I found five kittens that are muddy and disgusting like you need to come help me I'm like are you kidding so I ended up driving in the middle of the night and on my way to pick up the kittens I ended up popping a tire in the middle of the highway and going into a construction zone and so I got stuck there for like two hours trying to change my tire and she ended up bringing the kittens on the side of the highway to me and so we like exchanged them in the middle of the highway and yeah I took them home ended up finding the mom later that night the mom came over and yeah that's cr I didn't know that entire story yeah. I thought you found I thought she found them in a bush mm -mm. well called. she did find them in a bush okay she yeah. just called me so we have bush cats I have a bush kitty if you can see her <laughs> little, little tiny speck little tiny baby <laughs> well, you can't see her unless you're on my Patreon and you get full video episodes of, uh, and then you can see baby, uh, baby Frankie. She's in the background. But yeah, that's crazy. I know. <laughs> I know. I had to bottle feed one of them, but that one actually ended up passing away. Buried him. I know, that was rough. There's always was one, sad. though, I feel like in the litter. One always, always passes one. away, and it's usually the first born, because they always have a defect when they're born. I don't know why. There's always a weak link. Sadly. Dang, 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 dang. So what brought you on to TikTok? Because that's where I saw, you were the first TikToker that I saw from Cincinnati when I was on there. So like, how did that all come about? I actually came on TikTok when I was still dating my boyfriend at the time. <laughs> <laughs> that was my little uh, getaway because he, he always knew I was bi, but that was my like, cheat of just how many lesbians can I look at before he finds out <laughs> <laughs> then we ended up breaking up and then I finally came out as fully gay and came out on TikTok and then it just kind of blew up from there Damn. I guess so when was so when you got on TikTok when was that like when was when was the last guy that you dated was that in 2019 mm -hmm. I want to say like so that's fresh almost a year ago we were dated yeah yeah well, not super fresh, I guess, but yeah, I came like out. in the fall of last year. I don't know. I want to say the winter of last year. So it's like mm -hmm. a year and a half, maybe. That's crazy. So you haven't been out that long. Mm -hmm. I guess I didn't really realize that that was that close for you. Because I guess I've been out for like a few years. And like when you had talked about like, like the diff, like you've had like, not a lot of exes, but like, it kind of made me think that you had been out longer because of the exes <laughs> <laughs> you had. I don't have good that. luck with girls. No, why? Because I go, I don't go for the right ones. <laughs> and the ones that treat me well, you I push like, away. You don't like them? No. Mm, that's fun. They know. <laughs> that good? That's a good time. I like uh, it when they bully me. Yeah, that's not good. I know. <laughs> I feel no, like I you're know. that kind of, like you, you're independent. You like your time to yourself, you know. Yeah, I can't spend too much time with one person. Yeah. It'll stress me out. <laughs> Not even my friends. You like, like, if my friend is there for too long, I'm just like, please leave my house. <laughs> please get out. Oh. I'm going to go crazy. I feel that way, too, now that I live alone. Like, I can't spend that as much time with people as I once was. Yeah. Like, I need to have my own space. Like, I had looked at, I don't know if you, like, have, like, looked into, like, attachment styles and stuff like that. Of, like, I got really into it 
probably after a serious breakup that I had had like several months ago and uh into like attachment styles like sometimes like people are like avoidant they're anxious and then like there's secure attachment and then there's like one that's called like disorganized and so like when I look back at myself like I was super avoidant when I was dating men before I came out like mm-hmm. I would not open up emotionally I never took them seriously like I always criticized every little thing that I was in with them like, yeah. it'd be like, oh, like, I'm just not feeling it. Like, that was my best. That was my coined term. I'm just not feeling it. Like, I'm just not, I'm just not really feeling it with this guy. And, like, my friends would get so frustrated with me. Like, to the point where I had someone in college legitimately, like, was mad at me because it was, like, a friend of hers. And because I, I pulled the, like, my, my typical pattern of, like, oh, I like this guy because he, like, liked me. So, like, mm-hmm. obviously, like, oh, I like me. He likes me. And, the, and you know, I like attention. So, like. I'll do that. Like, who doesn't like a little bit of attention? Um, But then ultimately, I would send a text, you know, after a few weeks and be like, I'm just not really feeling it. I just don't think, you know, like I had like a specific one. Not that I had it saved on my like description. It's not like I sent it to everybody, but it was like the same thing of like, I don't like this, blah, blah, blah. I would always say like, you're just not doing it for me. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I would use that. But I, <laughs> I, I, I usually did, and, and I dated someone who had, like, a, an anxious attachment style, so she was a tad bit more, like, needed reassurance and was just a little bit, and it's not, like, anxious or avoidant is, like, one is better than the other, but I think I became, like, mildly avoidant because of the constant need yeah. that she was giving me. I was just kind of like, oof, like, that girl that, that had, like, the crazy first date, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, you were just kind of like, ah! Yeah. about it like I think when you're with someone or who is a little more anxious and needing that reassurance and needing that which isn't bad we all have different attachment styles like I became mildly avoidant I don't think completely yeah. avoidant but I definitely became mildly avoidant because I could not handle it but it, it is really interesting so I would always ask my <laughs> I would always ask my ex-boyfriend to have a threesome <laughs> all the time and he would just be like no, no, because I know you're going to end up liking the girl better than me. I'm just like, well. He knew. He knew. He fucking knew that. He, he definitely knew. knew. I would call girls hot all the time, and he would just look at me like, really? You're really going to do that in front of me? I'm just like, is she not hot, though? And he goes, yeah, she's hot. I'm like, okay. So at first, like, was he kind of like, cool, like, a girl that's bi or a girl that's a new girl is, like, amazing, like, who wouldn't no, want their No, he was actually gross girlfriend. out about it He first. was. Yeah. Okay. It made me more, it made me want to do it to him more. Because <laughs> <laughs> he didn't approve of it. Yeah. He didn't like it, so you were just like, well, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, I definitely made out with a, a bunch of my friends while we were dating, too. Yeah. Oh, it was fun. <laughs> Did he know about them? He, kind of. <clears throat> He knew about some of them. He got a video of me and Adele making out once. Yeah. Because he was just really drunk, and he was in the back going, brush my sin. Oh, Jesus. Just like, Ew. I mean, it was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but dating guys is just like dating a wall. Yeah, what's They're the difference? Tell me what dumb. the difference is. I never, like, I did date men, but I never, like, got close to any of them, but, like, like, maybe, like, a couple. I <laughs> lived with 20. my ex-boyfriend. Oh, shit! Never done that. Yeah. That was What are the differences between that? Boys are disgusting. They don't... Never put the toilet seat down! Oh, my God. That annoyed the shit out of me. I would literally tape the toilet seat down so he couldn't even take it up. Like, that's how annoyed I would get. You put, like, one of those baby things that, like, yeah. you can't, like, unhook them. <laughs> they never clean. He never did the dishes. Never knew how to cook. I always had to cook. I was literally the housewife, which I don't mind being in a girl relationship now. Yeah. But also, it was just, boys are so dumb. Literally, like, talking to a wall. <laughs> but then, dating girls, <coughs> girls just play so many games. Yeah. Like, you're like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know I play games sometimes, and I know I can be yeah. a little fucked up, but. Mm-hmm. I think everybody yeah. plays games to some degree. Even the people that say, I don't play any game. Like, okay, I swear to God, if you're on any dating app and you see hate playing games, run. Get the fuck out of there. If people truly are, like, out to have, like, a, a good relationship or, like, a play or whatever and they're not trying to, like, bring someone into their toxicity, they're not going to put in their bio, don't play no games. 
It is not. They're obviously toxic. I've seen that before. Yeah, I have. I've seen that on particular dating apps, and I don't use those anymore. But what I do use is Tammy. Have you heard about Tammy? I think I have it, actually. I just don't know how to work it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, okay, I've been using it, um, and it is one of the best apps I've used because it's completely, like, LGBTQ friendly. It's for LGBTQ plus people. Mm. So, like, I don't see any of those guys that are trying to pretend to be women. Oh have my you God, seen I hate that? that. Yes. <gasps> I made a TikTok about that. It was like um, when a guy pops up like on Girls Only. Terrible. Terrible. So and they don't have a video chat option. Tammy has the video chat where you can make sure that you aren't being catfished. And you can also, like what I like about it is you can, you know, because like lesbians love those long distance relationships. You can match with people <sighs> yeah. all over the world. I need to stop going for girls out of the state. <laughs> Well, it does not work in the end for me. I get it. You can focus, you can focus wherever region you want to. So if you just want to do it in Cincinnati. The two main states. I've literally talked to so many girls from Texas and Florida. Don't know what it is about those two damn states. Texas and Florida. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> well, there's so many toxic girls in those places. <laughs> Well, if you guys want to check out Tammy, um, uh, you can get started for free with the link in the bio. Let's talk about this. Why Texas and why Florida? Why are you hating on both those states? Is it the South? Is it, is it the Southern gals? No, it's not. I'm not hating on the states. Those states are beautiful. I love Florida. Have you seen Texas? I have. I've been to Texas. I have family that's in Texas. They're absolutely gorgeous. I don't know. Just... I'm not hating You're on this bitter. You're bitter. You're bitter on this mad. episode. You're like, girls suck. Girls are toxic. <laughs> <laughs> it is a toxic place right now with the girl I am talking to. <laughs> oh, oh, no. This is also funny. Um, one of the girls I used to talk to, her uh, best friend just found me and is hitting me up now. <gasps> oh, shit. <laughs> Oh, but she's hot. That's a tr <laughs> <laughs> But she's hot. So like the toxicity, but it doesn't matter. But you know where she's, she's also hot. from? Florida. Florida woman. Florida woman. Mm, Flor Florida man. lesbian woman. Have you ever seen those? Like That's whenever the there's shit going down, it's always like Florida man and Florida woman. But like these are like Florida lesbian woman. Yeah. <laughs> Florida gay woman does this. Yeah, that's some crazy triad shit. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would open up communication because that could turn into something fun, you know? She already <laughs> told me to visit her in Florida, and I was like, uh, you can visit me here. You already went and saw that other girl from Florida. You flew all the way down there to see her, so. Well, I drove, and I also went with friends. Oh, well, that's not, that's not, like, completely going down just to see her? Yeah, but she came up to Ohio twice. Really? Yeah, just to see me. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, my friends are just like, I can't even get a, someone to come over who lives 10 minutes away, and you have girls flying to see you. Like, <laughs> it happens. Yeah. It I mean, happens. It's lesbians, dude. Yeah. I, I don't know how else to explain it, but. Yeah, it's really hard to explain to my straight friends that, like, the amount of, like, like, a first date isn't normally, like, a couple hours. It's, like, four to eight hours. So, like, it's more like three dates in one. So everything moves faster yeah. because of that. And also just because of the, you know, as women, you're more emotionally connected. You can become more emotionally connected. Yes. Unless, you know, you decide to not show emotion any way, shape, or form whatsoever. I did, I did that with that girl who found the cats. I don't know how she still liked me. I you literally... You were so... You were emotionally unavailable? Yeah. I barely talked to her. That's probably why, because she wanted more of you. And she kept... I she, also, this is... Because I've been in this position. I've also been in the, I've been on both. I've been on both sides of the spectrum. But more recently, I've definitely been in that position where you think that that person's going to open up and they like kind of string you along. And so they yeah. give you just like a little bit. So you're thinking that you're, you're like, okay, now like we'll hit that deeper level of intimacy. Like, and it never happens. Yes. Yeah. And, and, Poor and girl. like looking back, like, because I have both done that and not that I've specifically like, strung someone out or did something like that but like if you're emotionally unavailable like you're you're not gonna open up to no one true so especially if there's no commitment and there's not also just the ugliest thing i've ever heard 
I nitpick like little things if I. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, it's probably because you didn't like her. Yeah, if you liked her, that stuff doesn't matter. That's true. You know what I mean? If you don't like someone, you nitpick. That's why I nitpicked all of the guys that I dated because they never really (laughs) liked them. So, like, the things that, like, probably would have been cute to girls who actually liked them, I was like, ew, like, get away from me. Like, I had this one guy that I dated, and he would, like, you know, mess with me. Like, he would, you know, go like this and, like, mess with me. And, like, if it was a girl, I'd be like, (laughs) Oh my god, you're so funny, but I literally was like, just get away from me. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, I'm so annoyed. I like, dunk punch him. When he'd get, like, high or when he'd get drunk, he'd do it even more because he wanted intimacy. He wanted to joke and play and, like, he wanted, he wanted more of me than I was willing to give. Right. And so he would try, and, like, me looking back, I definitely, like, was so, like, I had such a wall. He ended up, like, emotionally cheating on me. With his ex-girlfriend, which didn't even, I didn't know until after. And I wasn't even that mad. I was kind of a little hurt by the fact that that happened, but I also understood it because I, like, gave him literally nothing. Yeah. So now, like, being on the other side of it where I was thinking, oh, like, we just need more time. Like, we just need this. Like, this will be the time where we will be able to build something and connect and, like, that wasn't her fucking expectation at all. I don't think she had any plan, and she definitely didn't have a plan to, like, open up to me. No. And so, like, hindsight being twenty twenty, like, I would not have had done that expectation. Oh, no, not done it again, but I wouldn't have had that expectation. Crazy shit. But that's probably why she did that, you know? Oops. Because I'm anxious. People who have an anxious attachment style love people who have an avoidant attachment style, even if it's, like, mild. I've noticed that. Yeah. And I typically – I'd always had – I, like, I, I sh- had shifted with different relationships in my life and family stuff. Like, I had some where I was avoidant. I had some where I was anxious. Generally, I'm pretty secure, but, like, there's some people that bring out that anxiousness inside of me. And I got yeah. that. That happened to me recently where I was anxious all the time, and that was, like, not me. And, like, was needing reassurance and, like, all the stuff. Felt super devalued and, like, not a good look. It wasn't a good look for me. <laughs> I like someone more when they aren't needy and aren't like reassuring me I guess yeah it makes me like them more <laughs> so you like avoiding people yeah okay but I'm also but you're also avoidant <laughs> but see that if someone's being more avoidant than you then you become wanting that attention yeah you know yeah attachment styles are fun as you guys can tell I've been getting really into them lately <laughs> well, I'm also a psych major so that stuff is like interesting to me in general but I was a psych major for my first semester. Yeah. It's a good time. Yeah. It was interesting. I met some interesting people. I follow a lot of good accounts, too. Like, you guys like this stuff. Like, Millennial Therapist is a really good account. Rising Woman's a really good account. Holistic Psychologist is a really good account. I think I follow that one. I really like it. And, like, it, it's, like, when you're processing certain things, like, it really helps to, I don't know. I like to have my feed with a bunch of that, that stuff. I keep getting the same video on my For You page over and over and over again. And it's really stressing me out. But it's like, you found your soulmate. Don't let her leave. I'm just like, oh, no. <laughs> I'm just like, what did you say? <laughs> Which one? Oh, my God. You're being such a fuck boy. <laughs> I know. Hey, you just I like to protect, I protect myself. Yeah. So it's a way of protecting myself. I don't know. Yeah. You got to own it. Just own it. Own it, own it, own it. I've become Shay. <laughs> I am Shay. Shay is now in a relationship. Shay is me and, and I am that Shay. Is, that energy is transferred ah, to you. I guess so. So do you think it's like a way of protecting yourself, like to not just put all your eggs in one basket is what you're meaning? Like to have like a couple yeah. different people in case something doesn't work out that you have other people fall back on? Uh-huh. Yeah. I get that. But I also, like, don't open up to people at all until I'm, like, with them, with them. Mm-hmm. Like, I you're, guess. well, that makes sense. Like, if you're, like, in a committed thing yeah. with someone, which has more stability than just not, you know, just, like, casually dating and not being exclusive. So. Yeah. And also, I'm not even, like, casually dating anyone. I'm just kind of. Just kind of hanging out. But yeah. Yeah. I get that. Living, living life, flirting <laughs> here and there, but that's it. I, th- I think there needs to be times for that, you know? Times to not be hung up on other people and getting distracted by other people. I feel like I'm in that part right now where 
I'm like finally just settling in. I'm not really seeking yeah. out anything intentionally, you know? Yeah. I need to, so, I keep getting these matches. Like they're cute, but I keep deleting them. So I'm like, I really don't want to start anything new at this point. Yeah. I just don't have the energy to start something new. I mean, they were, there are some super cute people who've matched with me. I'm just like, the energy I have to put in and like going on a date with you and mm-hmm. restarting the whole process. It doesn't sound intriguing to me. No. <laughs> Having to start over again is, is, is rough. So tell me about the story about you coming out. <laughs> um, I came out as bi when I was 16. Well, I, I didn't come. I came out to my friends as bi. I didn't come out to my family yet. And then I was with this girl at my work and I wanted to see something, so we ended up hanging out. I think it was at her house first, and then we did stuff, and I was like, oh, shit, like, maybe I am gay. And so then we ended up, like, getting together, and I asked my mom, because I was still living at home when I was 16, but I asked my mom, I was like, so I have this new best friend. Like, do you care if she comes and spends the night? She goes, oh, yeah, sure, sweetie. I'm just like, okay. So we would have, like, sleepovers all the time. And then once I finally came out to my mom, she, like, came to my 17th birthday party, and I, like, sat on her lap, and my mom was like, are you kidding? Oh. I was like, oh, this is gonna, this is gonna be rough. She wasn't, she was fine with me being gay, she was not fine with the fact that I called my girlfriend my best friend, and that I was (laughs) sleeping with my girlfriend at my house all the time. (laughs) She did not like that. But then she actually ended up cheating on me in front of my face at my job. Jesus. Yeah. So that kind of like ruined girls for me. I didn't trust girls (laughs) after that. So I went back to Oh no. A guy ended up dating a guy for two years and then now here I am. Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. That'll that'll fucking do it for you. Have you ever talked to anybody from TikTok? Like have you have you? Okay. That's how I met Texas girl. Yeah? I didn't know that. Damn, is she also a creator? Mm-mm. No. I've also talked to, um, do you know Maddie Ward? That I sounds, really talk to her. That sounds familiar. I snapchat her for like literally two days. That really sounds familiar. She's Agreed. dating someone now. So you guys kind of like not really even talked, but like no. kind of. No, I think she had a less. girlfriend. She had a girlfriend at the time? No. Damn. But she has a girlfriend now. I think she was like about to have this girl. And I talked to, I don't know, I don't think I've talked to anyone from TikTok. Actually, I take that back. Well, I've like flirted. But You've like kind of found people, but you like haven't like dated anybody from TikTok. No, like I have a bunch of their Snapchats, but that's it. So, do you think that it is a? Because I, I think it's definitely a place to like. Fu- like, I found all of you guys. Like, found mm-hmm. queer friends. Oh yeah, for sure. What about dating? Like, what are your opinions on it? Is it better to find someone in person? Is it better to find someone on a dating app? I don't know. I mean, all my girls that I've talked to are either from dating apps or TikTok. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) We do. Um, And then the one girl that I worked with when I was 16, that's it. I feel like Cincinnati just doesn't have a lot of lesbians. I think that there is like a good community, like a good community of people, but like I just kind of realized it like, um, because I started finding out more like just like queer people in the area mm-hmm. i think it's bigger than you think it is because i didn't think it was that big either no. but i think it's a little bit bigger than you think i'm gonna go to the gay bar down here really we bad. should go is it open birdcage yeah is it open? birdcage should be i need to check but it should be open until 10 like the rest of them I, some queer like not queer but like gay adjacent bars too another girl that i have talked to this year went on again this is another crazy one date but went on one date and then I had forgotten my keys so she had to drop me off and when she was dropping me off the next morning we didn't even do anything but she dropped me off the next morning and said bye I love you and I was like wow oh my god I need to go like she dropped a love bomb Locked on the, the door first date. and never come out of my house again. <clears throat> Yikes. Yeah, I was I was like, all right, so I'm never going to talk to you again. <laughs> so she love bombed you? Yeah. And then I ghosted her. <gasps> yeah. I was an asshole, but, like, that shit scared me. Like, ghosted her, like, sh- like you just didn't respond to her messages, or you just, like, she I, didn't send you any messages? And you no, just, like, I did. I just ghosted her and everything. Wow. 
nuts. Mm-hmm. Oh no. I didn't know how to respond. Oh no. I like went inside and I told Maddie what happened and she goes, Ew. And I was like, yeah, I don't know what to do. Damn. That's crazy. It just really freaked me out. <laughs> oh my god. So I guess again with the avoidance, I am an avoidant yeah. person. <laughs> so in summary. <laughs> I do avoid things. <laughs> I mean, it's like neither good or bad. It's just good to know. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think I'm past avoidance. I think I, I've i swung the other way. I will say there is something about, like, people who, who do that, who they love bomb, where they where it's not warranted, obviously, like, she doesn't love you. Yeah. Like, she just met you. Exactly. But even on a smaller scale, like, and this is just <laughs> – general advice from my own experience if people are giving you lots and lots of attention and they are just like over the moon obsessed with you and they don't really know you it's a red flag yeah <laughs> like it feels really good and, and you really think that they they actually do like you and then you realize later on that they they didn't so that's some advice i would give to you guys like People who are seem to have it all on social media, don't fucking listen to it. People who have followings, they can be as small as ours or as big as, you know, Avery Cyrus and things like that. They're just normal people with their own shit and they aren't anything special. I can literally tell you that. I've dated creators. I'm friends with creators. Like I, I'm in those circles. Are you trying to say we're not shit? We ain't shit. No, we aren't. We aren't. But I'm just saying, like, these people, like, don't put them on a pedestal. Like, don't put them on a pedestal. Like, don't... None of us are perfect. Don't think that they have something that you don't... Like, it just... I'm telling you from experience, it is not the way that it seems. And it never truly is. So, that's what I have to say on that. I've wanted to say that for a while. Just people... You're ready. Not being... Like, they... not, Not being what they seem. Yeah. Um, and creating a, a false persona on social media to garner attention and, and stuff like that. Like the people that are on social media and the people that are making TikToks, like, yes, you have people who love to create, like we love to create. And, and you have people who like, obviously like, it's nice to get attention and validation from it, but there are people who are doing it only for attention and validation. They might say that they like to create, but you have to be cognizant of that. And, and the people who are truly on it because they like to help people and the people who are just trying to get cheap attention. I always try to like all my comments and go around just to like show the appreciation. Yeah, I do too. I, I'm not really, like I don't look at other people's comments, other people's videos all too much. Yeah. But I definitely make, just want to make sure I like look, make sure that people know that I saw their comments. Right. And stuff like that. I don't like the weird comments I get. I get some. Yeah. I honestly don't like going live I like going live for the people that are there for me but lately when I go live there are just so many creepy old men who come on and are just like oh my gosh you're lesbian please kiss her or like I hate that twerk or I'm just like please please leave I haven't gone live since someone kept making accounts with my name and putting like two i's and two e's and it really freaked me out and I haven't been on live since like, I went on Elise's live when they were here, mm-hmm. um, and that was super fun because, like, her, her she followers... She a good group of followers. Oh, my God. Her followers are the shit. Yeah, they're and, so And, like, nice they know us, her. and they, like, and they hang out. Like, I want to hopefully cultivate a live that's like that. I just don't yeah. get on it anymore, so I feel like if I do a live, like, people aren't going to be on it because they're not used to me being on it, yeah. you know? I just don't do them anymore when I started the podcast because people can listen to me every week, you That's know, true. like it's not live, but it's, I mean, close, you yeah. know, close to that. But yeah. All right. Well, we have questions with the queers where we have a question that we answer on the podcast from unqualified advice. Okay. All right. This question comes from Katie. She's also from Florida. She's a Florida gay. Oh, man. <laughs> Maybe you've dated her. I don't know. She's um, she's 25, and she writes, Hi, Queer Talk. Hey, Brie. Love the podcast. Um, love that Shay's coming in and doing these episodes sometimes. I have a question about a girl that I am talking to. 
Uh, she is long distance, and every time that we try to meet up, she ends up not being able to do it all of a sudden. We do have such a great connection, though. We talk for hours at a time. She's constantly sending me cute little things to make me feel like she was thinking about me, and I really do think she's thinking about me, and I do the same thing for her. You know, we send each other stuff through the mail, but every time I ask her to hang out or ask her to FaceTime, she says that her phone is broke and she doesn't have a camera on her phone and that there always seems to be something going on when we meet up. Any help would be lovely. I mean, that sounded exactly how my relationship with this girl from Texas was going, but like we would at least FaceTime because I need to make sure she was real. Yeah. I feel like since watching never... Seasons of Catfish, yeah. uh, if you've seen Catfish, Katie, I... Sis, I'd be careful. Yeah, I have a strong feeling that she's not who she seems. Yeah. Uh, this person is not who they seem. I don't want to judge their, their pronouns or their gender. If their camera's broken, you know, some people have shitty phones, yeah. But, like, it's also 2020. There's a bunch of different outlets you could use. Yeah. She could use Zoom. Like, there could, like, she could get a computer. I don't know. I think it's a little fishy um, that she's doing both. Like, she can't FaceTime you, and she also can't meet up with you, and there's always something going on. I'm not saying that your guys' connection isn't true. I'm sure that there are some connections there, but you have to read someone's intentions. Are they just trying to get pass the time, distract themselves, but they don't really want anything, and they're not... They're just uh, looking for attention, kind of. Yeah, or they just, maybe they don't even know that, but, like, they obviously aren't making any sort of commitments. They can't make a commitment to even, like, video chat you. They definitely aren't making a commitment to go to see you, but they want to take your time and suck your time. You know, I, I would be very cautious, like what I was saying earlier, about people showering you with compliments who who don't who haven't never met you and, and don't really know you just kind of like make sure you know what you're doing before you put that much energy yeah. into a person who could not be what they're saying yeah they are. and like if people show you who they are believe them you know if if they don't want something and they've said that they don't want a certain thing or i don't i don't know a lot about your guys' stuff um just because there isn't too much information, so I don't want to assume things, but, like, I, it's really easy to like someone and block out all the negative things or block out things that aren't aligned with your expectations, and then later on be like, oh, shit, like, they did say this, and they did say this, and, but they did different things. I think it's harder, like, when someone says things, but they do the opposite, you have to watch the actions, you know? Like, if they say they like you and they say all of these things, but they do things that are contradictory to that, you gotta look at the actions, because actions, I mean, it's cliche, but they speak louder than words. So somebody can say all the right things, but they don't do them, so then it confuses you because you're like, well, they told me this, and I trust them, but they're doing something else. I would definitely be cognizant and really try and take yourself out of it and, and see what they're actually saying and the expectations and what you think they're trying to get out of, out of it and what you're trying to get out of it. Because if you're getting out the same thing, if you guys are aligned and you guys just want to pass the time and talk with each other, then that's fine. But if you want something more and they don't, then that's not going to work. It's just not. It doesn't matter how much attention they give you. I agree. Yeah. That's what I have to say on that. And on the other hand, you also don't know if this person is truly, truly are. You know, they could be somebody completely different, um, which is just a whole set of other issues. But even if they are who they say they are, there's still some stuff that I would... I would uh, check out, try and check into. But uh, yeah, that's what I got on that. Yeah. All right, we're gonna do lightning round. Okay. Cats or dogs? Oh, dogs. What? You have cats? I know, but I'm a dog. Oh I have my cats God. unintentionally. Jesus. My two cat, all of the cats I have in my are very unintentional. Like okay. the two Simba and Kiara, wasn't meant to have them. Some lady just found me on Facebook and saw that I was working for a veterinarian program. She was like, um, I have these two week old kittens that I don't want. I'm going to euthanize them. And I was like, uh, no, yeah. like I will take them. Fine. Okay. Well, fine. Five dogs. <laughs> uh, big spoon or little spoon? 
Little. Eh. You're a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just little, so I feel I like do, I, <laughs> I can't reach my arm around them sometimes. <laughs> I just have little arms. Oh I feel like a little T-Rex. Ariel or Jasmine? Ariel. That was really quick. <laughs> <laughs> was super quick. Um, was so favorite queer movie? Blur now. Mm, okay. Let's go. Uh, celebrity you had a crush on growing up? Oh, Santana from Glee. Okay. R.I.P. I know. Rest in peace. Yeah. Would you want to jump from a plane or bungee jump? I want to bungee jump over the ocean. Okay. I think that would be dope. Let's go. Last question. Vans or Doc Martens? Vans. Okay, cool. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much, McKenna, for being on. Of course. Um, if you guys want to check out McKenna, you can find her at McKenna okay. Temple yep. on TikTok. Instagram, it's McKenna under dash temple, but yeah. Okay. Same gist. Cool. You can find me on all platforms at Brie Logan. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing. If you're not subscribed, give us a follow on Spotify, and we will see you on the next episode.